My guest on this podcast is Sean Hooker. He's the head of redress at the Property Redress Scheme, which is one of the only two property ombudsman schemes in this country. We talk about the impact that has, whether you're a tenant, a landlord, a letting agent, an estate agent, and even a sourcing agent, and what impact that regulation has on you. Sean and the PRS also have the ear of government. And what I mean by that is that they are regularly in dialogue with the government about what's going on in the private rented sector. So we talk about this new government that just come in, what changes and impact they might have within the private rented sector, and some of the things that we need to be aware of. So let's now go jump straight into the podcast. The Estate Agency Act says if you're in the uh, in the business of, uh, of buying or selling, and um, so if you're buying as a sourcer, then uh, you are definitely covered. Um, and you know we see uh, a lot of people going into that into that business now because sourcing can be very highly rewarding uh, for both the uh, the sourcer and their clients. People are different. Yes. And I think it's very important that people, uh, you know, find a personality, uh, 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 an agent with a personality that suits the way that you would like to work. Yes. And, 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 and you know, once you've got that trust, you, you'll probably keep that agent for life. Sean, you're the head of uh, Redress at PRS, and there's about 25, 30,000 agents across the country that fall under one of the uh, Redress schemes. And there's probably about that many number again that self-manage who don't necessarily fall under the uh, some of the regulations right now uh, in terms of um, redress but that may be changing soon as well well look uh, we saw just before the general election that the there was what's called the renters reform bill was going through uh, parliament it had got as far as the house of lords uh, and then of course we had the election so it's gone back to square one but the groundwork has all been done a part of that was to introduce uh, landlord redress or redress uh, uh, for the tenants of uh, landlords who yeah. don't use an agent because that was the big gap that was in the market. So just as a clarification then right now if somebody's a tenant and they have an issue with um, uh, their, their managing agent there's a redress scheme uh, either PRS or ombudsman and you're uh, uh, the head of redress at PRS uh, they've got one of those two organizations to go to depending on which one the agent's a member of to be able to seek an independent person to, to look at the, the, the problem, the challenge or concern, whatever it might be. But if you're a land, uh, if you're an age, uh, sorry, a tenant that is uh, being managed directly by your landlord, then you don't have any redress right now. Well, no, I mean, you do have deposits, of yes. course, uh, but that's, if you don't take a deposit, then yeah. there isn't necessarily a, a body you can go to to make a complaint about about your landlord. And definitely, uh, you, you know, for those landlords that uh, are, never use a, a, an agent, uh, then it's things like uh, property condition that is so important. Yeah. Who do you complain to? Of course, you've got the council, but uh, the councils are, you know, understaffed and, you, you know, it's not always, they can only look at really serious complaints, yeah. serious hazards. If it's something that doesn't fall within their remit, then you're on your own, really. Yes. And with regards to the, the kind of complaints and challenges you see, what do you see uh, is on the rise? Because uh, you've been doing this, um, what, probably 17, 18 years, something like that? Well, in terms of, uh, in terms, uh, yes, in terms of the, of lettings, uh, so we take complaints from both landlords and from tenants. Okay. So a landlord is as much as a consumer yeah, of. So there's a, three parties in this, uh, situ uh, in uh, this, uh, correct. Situation yeah. We're yes. About, so yeah. there's a landlord, that their agent, who they, who they commission, and then it's the tenant who, the land, uh, the, the agent is probably the guys who are dealing with, directly with the tenant. So in terms of landlord, um, uh, landlord complaints. It's uh, two areas. One, uh, uh, whether money the monies have been paid over to the uh, to to the rents have been paid over. We do get situations or where lack of rents being paid over. Yeah, lack of rents okay. uh, uh, coming over uh, and inspections of the property. You know, it's very much that if you are hands off on a property and, and trusting an agent to do it. And then you find out that they haven't been doing the inspections. You're going to be very disappointed. Yes. So that's on the landlord side. On the tenant side, it's repairs and it's speed of a communication, uh, and it, and it's uh, things like uh, leaks that uh, you know don't seem to ever get fixed. Um, damp and mold that appears. Uh, all of these things, repairs are more important for the uh, the tenant, and uh, whilst they're living in the property. And then also, this doesn't just apply to letting agents, because if there's an estate agent selling property, uh, then there's also the redress schemes that they have Correct. to sign up to yeah. as well. And of course, there's this category of sources, people finding property to yeah, sell. Sourcing, yeah. Um, and sometimes not 
uh, people are aware that effectively they fall under the same uh, regulation as well as an estate agent. So they should all be si also be signed up to one of the uh, redress schemes as well. That's right. So uh, you know, the Estate Agency Act says if you're in the uh, in the business of, uh, of buying or selling, and um, so. If you're yeah. buying as a sourcer, then uh, you are definitely covered. Um, and you know, we see uh, a lot of people going into that into that business now because sourcing can be very highly rewarding uh, for both the uh, the sourcer and their clients, uh, and it's uh, uh, an effective way of getting into property. Yeah. But you need to have everything lined up, the quality, you know, um, uh, the compliance and the, the knowledge to do that. And part of that is being a redress scheme. Hey, if you know anything about my property investing journey, you know how much importance I've put on that success has come from the people I've met along the way. And that's why I've been running property networking events for over a decade now. Every month, we have up to about 200 people get together, like-minded people that share ideas, connect with other people. And also each month, we have different speakers that are sharing their knowledge and experience as well. And sometimes I'm sharing my experience to really help you in your property investing journey. So I'd encourage you to come along. Our meetings are on the third Tuesday of every month. We'll put a link just on the screen, just hit sadjasane.com forward slash networking and I look forward to hopefully seeing you at the next meeting. And are you seeing many uh, more complaints starting to appear in that sector uh, right now around uh, sourcing as more and more awareness comes because I've got to put my hand up when I first started in property probably about 17, 18 years ago we weren't aware of any uh, compliance or such as case find some deals and sell it to somebody but very quickly over time we realized actually uh, you know this is not that different what the state agent is doing the only difference is who's paying our fee. Absolutely right. So uh, we are seeing a rise in, uh, in complaints on that. Uh, but but actually, if you look at it also positively, uh, uh, people sources are joining. Uh, you know, the compliance level across uh, agencies yeah. very very high in both the uh, both the, the the redress schemes. And actually, if you are running your business uh, successfully, everybody makes mistakes. Complaints are your way of dealing and finding out and processing and learning from yeah. mistakes. So you should be welcoming a, a number of complaints coming through your business. Of course, try and sort them out yourself. So get yourself in a, a very, very robust complaint process. Try to deal with them. Don't, uh, you know, be scared of them. Don't push them away. Uh, Try and deal with them as best as you can through your own complaint processes. We're only here to help in the extremists that the relationship's broken down and we can try and bring you back together. We're not the first port of call. We're not yes. the first port so of call. So when there's a, a problem or a complaint or an issue, there needs to be a complaints procedure internally Absolutely. within that organisation first. Yeah. That needs to go through. Yeah. And then if there's still no satisfaction, then... Then they can come to us. Yeah. You know, and and, and we, we have a three, three-pronged three process. And number one is that one of our... Uh, case uh, case assessors will give a telephone conversation with both parties. We won't put you in the same room and, and get you to fight it out. And that's not the way we do it. We'll talk to you individually and we'll see if we can actually bring you together and try and resolve that where you'd fail. Because, you know, property's personal and you know a lot of these relationships are personal. And sometimes things, you know, are not seen clearly by either side there. But we can help uh, kind of, as a helicopter view, bring you together to do that. Then after that, if uh, if if it, if it uh, it's still irreconcilable, unadjudicated, we'll look at it and 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 we'll come up with a decision that will be binding if the if yes. the if the complainant accepts it. Uh, and in uh, you know if 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 they for some reason make a mistake or uh, there's an error somewhere, then you know it comes up for me to have a look at and yeah. I, I will review it and. You know, my, my word is kind of final yes. after that. So. And that's something that the agents have to accept because there's no uh, alternative. It's a case no, of... they have to accept yes, the decision. The, yeah. the alternative is that effectively they can't practice because you could then remove their Well, membership. if they don't uh, comply with the, uh, with, with the decision and about... Uh, uh, about ninety percent of, uh, of of our decisions involve some form of uh, uh, compensation. It's not high, by the way. You know, we it's not do have a thousands of pounds. No, yes. no, no. We have had some. You know, okay. we have had some that have been very, very high. Right. Majority of them are, you know, are are, are, are uh, mild, what we call mild to medium yes. uh, compensation awards. A couple of hundred pounds, maybe up to a thousand pounds. If if that for some reason isn't paid and uh, and and the agent persists in not communicating or mm -hmm. uh, uh, refusing to to uh, to 
uh, to pay the compensation. Uh, then uh, we can uh, take them off the scheme. We've got a memorandum of understanding with the uh, the other ombudsman scheme, plus uh, a lot of the other organisations, including trading standards and and, the, and 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 enforcement agencies like that. And uh, if if um, if they don't or can't join the other scheme yeah. because they they haven't complied, so they they can't. Uh effectively get kicked out of one and go and join the other one. No, no, no. Yes. So that's the memorandum of understanding we have. You know, if, if they do a decision and they've they've excluded their member, we won't accept them. Yes. You can't kind of jump between yes. the two. Yeah. And, and, and of course, you get informed uh, uh, local trading standards. And, you know, in this day and age of enforcement, intelligence is key. So if you've got a kind of a, a nailed on a uh, person that you can go and uh, get a fine off of, they will do that. So it's not in your best interest not to comply with the, yes. with the redress and scheme. This, this, is, this has not been something that's been around a long, long time. This has happened probably 15, 16 years, something like that. So. Yeah, so we've been going since 2014. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's 10 years. 10 years, okay. 10, ten yeah. years, uh, and we started with zero members, and we now have... Um, almost uh, 20,000 okay. uh, branches and, 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 and members. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them doing both the state agency and netting agency, mm -hmm. and some doing uh, long term uh, lease, leasehold management, yes. which also is it's covered. Um, and of course, uh, you know, we've also been talking to the government and been very active in trying to get the whole of the redress uh, uh, environment extended across the whole of the, the private rented sector, which will eventually will mean. Or very very soon, hopefully, will mean that landlords will also have to provide this uh, uh, this service to their comp uh, to their um, to their customers as well. So, yeah. uh, I think it's it's building a safer and more um, secure uh, environment uh, for the for the for the private rented sector, which uh, which we need. Yes, I, I agree. There, uh, various forms of uh, licensing, compliances, redress schemes. These things. Uh, they can feel like they're a, an extra pain, but actually, for the better good of the industry, they they certainly uh, I think are things that need to be there to protect everybody involved. And we'll talk more about um, the government, some of the changes that may be happening uh, in a few moments. So, if somebody's uh, looking to appoint a letting agent, and we'll talk about the estate agent in a moment, what things do you think they should look for? Um, what would you suggest are important to? Um, uh, to try and work out who would be a good agent to work with. Right, so if we break it down into, into, into a number of areas, so we take just pure compliance, because remember that the, uh, the lessons industry, industry is not heavily regulated. Yes. It's not, it doesn't have an overarching regulation. Re regulator. That might change at some point in the future. That might change in the right future. We, yes. we, there was a big report that came out that looked and very much recommended that agents should have education, uh, um, a, a code of conduct, um, a re redress in place, which they already have, uh, and accountability, and, 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 and have, uh, you know, to demonstrate that they are competent in yes. what they do. Uh, however, we do have compliance in the sense of the redress schemes. So check that they're one of the two redress schemes. They must put that on their website, or if they have an office, they must put a sticker or uh, a certificate somewhere clearly visible to you. Uh, check that they are um, also have client money protection. That's another mandatory uh, requirement. And client money protection protects the money uh, that is paid to an agent that they hold on behalf of their client. So, in, in for a landlord, for, uh, it's the rents. So, if they're collecting rent for yes. you on a on, on, on a, reg, reg, a monthly basis, they could hold that money for up to you know uh, a month, even uh, yeah. ten or fifteen days is the usual one. Uh, but that money is 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 in their bank account. Uh, it's better be a, cl a client account, but they could. If it disappears, they've got the insurance on it. That they've got professional indemnity insurance in place. That if, so if they make a mistake, yeah. that they're covered. So those are the compliance sides of it. And then what about quality? So look, there are good organisations out there, Property Mark and Ucala, who uh, you know are voluntary organisations an agent can join. Just because an agent is not a member of them doesn't mean they're a bad agent. Yeah. They may, uh, you know, they may be a smaller agent that uh, that, that knows the market very well. You know. Have a look on the websites. Have a look at uh, uh, um, reviews. Yeah, and reviews. Yeah. Rate rate by agent, or uh, you know, all agent, or whatever the 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 the, 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 the rating uh, uh, websites are out there. There's a few of them. Um, um, make sure that uh, then that you go and talk to them, mm. and you ask them. Uh, 
what's your terms and conditions? What's what's you know what's uh, your management agreement? Uh, so let's have a look at uh, uh, your management agreement. What are you offering? What services do I get? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to deliver them? Yes. Now. You know, a lot of time you'll go down there and they'll say, oh, well, you can have lettings only or you can have less lettings and rent, uh, rent collection. Then you have this, this, this phrase, full management. Yes. Well, what do you, you know, full exactly. management, yeah. I, 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 there's many landlords out there and they think, well, fully management means they're going to look after the property the same way that I would do that. It doesn't work like that. Mm. They will only deliver the services that you contracted with them. Yeah. So when you, they say full management, you say, well, well li literally, what, what are you offering me and uh, how much is it going to cost me? So they have to display all their fees. Yeah. So they can't hide any fees yeah. and they have to tell the services of what, uh, of what they've got. I would go down each one of them and ask them and, you know, so what do you mean by that? Yes. Or, uh, you know, so you say you're going to inspect the property. What does that mean? Uh, I've seen a lot of the time there, and, and I'm not saying it was necessarily wrong in the past, but in this day and age, you've got to be a bit more thorough. They, they'd do an inspection, they'd go around, they'd, they'd spend 10 minutes with the tenant, say, hey, everything all right, anything wrong, and then they'd go home, you know, after a cup of tea. No, you need to do Same this a lot more thoroughly now. Yeah. So, you know, of course you can't go in there and do a full inspection because they're already living there, but you can yeah. go in there, you can you can look at evidence, you can and you can do a little report and send it back to your landlord. Communication back to the landlord it's so important because you're managing their expectations yes now they may kind of think well actually no i'm not even you know i trust you get on with it but if you can say well actually i've got an audit trail here's the report you know if they don't want to open it and read it it's up to them yeah. but you've done it when it comes to a complaint and i ask to say well, I, well did you do the inspections yeah we did and i said well, well where's the proof mm. where's the report yeah. where's the communication Oh no! Well, you you know we did it. Yeah. Well, no, if if it's not written down, it didn't happen, as far as I, yes. I'm concerned. Yeah, there's no evidence of it yeah. happening. So you're doing your homework very, very thoroughly. Yeah. Now, remember, the one thing that you should not be looking for as your number one priority is how much is all this going to cost. And often that's a starting point for many yeah, people. Yeah, that's a starting the case point. Of, right, what's the price okay. before and all of everything uh, else? Absolutely. When you've done all that yes. uh, that homework, yes. then you can say, well, actually. Is that worth what I, I, I want to pay for it? Yes. Then that, that's where you have the conversation about the cost. Yes. You know, and the guy that's there saying I'm going to do full management for five percent, you know, or whatever, is not going to do a thorough it's job. It's not. It's not possible. It's just not doable. No. Uh, and and you know, I have this conversation sometimes with people uh, because we run a letting agency as well. And when people are asking about management I, and they ask about price, the first thing I say is, look, we're not the cheapest. If you're looking for the cheapest, we're probably not going to be yeah. right for you. What we will do is a thorough service, but you are paying for that thorough service. Um, and uh, so you've got to decide what you want. Yes, absolutely. And again, then, then you choose the agent you feel comfortable yes. with. If you know, if you want uh, a, a family-run uh, business, uh, uh, then you know the, the knows a, an intimate area very, very well. Yes. Then th th there are lots of very, very, very good smaller agents. If you are, you know, like a, a lot of people, and it's perfectly acceptable you, you know you like your mcdonald's type go to the, some of the bigger larger systemized bigger uh, yeah. systemized but they they will have had all the compliance put in they do training but they're not necessarily as personable yes. and 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 uh, you know and 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 if so yeah i, I don't want if, if you feel if you feel you are more needy find an agent that's going to give you that personal care if you uh, but you know you want the efficiency you know of a big organization uh, your portfolio is slightly bigger yes. maybe a bigger guy might suit you it's yeah. entirely up to you after you've done it's a great your way of putting it uh, it just depends how needy you are because uh, you know it's a bit of a running joke sometimes you end up uh, you you give your property out to management then you manage the managing agent yeah, yeah. Sort of to get things done so it's it's how hands on hands off you want to a hundred percent and i don't mean that in any you know i mean people are different yes and I think it's very important that people, uh, you know, find a personality, uh, 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 an agent with a personality that suits the way that you would like to work. Yes. And, 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 and you know, once you've got that trust, you, you'll probably keep that agent for life. You yes. know, so, uh, you know, it's, it's so important that that first steps are done. Yes. And they, they are uh, probably looking after your most valuable assets. Yes, 100%. That, that you have. 
Well, yeah, both your property and also uh, the, your next yes. most valuable asset, which is the customer, the tenant yes. that's paying the rent. Yes. So you know, we have to we have to get it into our heads now that you know uh, uh, that uh, it's a business and that the tenants are customers. Yes. And I, I very much loved it that uh, you know Ben Beadle of the NRLA was saying maybe we need to dump the words tenant and landlord. I've been saying that for years. Yes. You know, it's very kind of archaic. Yes, it is. A where term, are they? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not not entirely sure what the uh, the, the the phrase will be, but they are customers essentially. Yes. We like the word yes. customer because they, they, they pay for a service and you're delivering that service. Yes. And I always talk about our accommodation as products. I think about them as, right, what type of product do we want to create mm -hmm. and who do we want to create it for? Who is our customer? Because that's essentially what we're doing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, of course, you're the, the customer of the agent and they've got to treat you yes. as the customer, but also the tenant as your as the as you as the customer's customer, mm. you've got to look after them because that's where the income stream is coming in. So if they're not looking after your tenant, they're more likely to be discontent, maybe leave, maybe you know refuse to pay the rent or whatever, and that causes you the headache. Yes. And and so the agent is essential in getting that uh, you know that relationship right. Yes. So we've just uh, come out of a general election. We now have mm -hmm. a, a new government uh, in charge of the country, and uh, over the last I don't know maybe ten years or so, it's just felt like Maybe the government, whichever parties uh, are running the country, are maybe not that interested in landlords anymore. There doesn't seem to be a home with them. And you're in a fortunate position where you get to lobby government. Yeah. So I guess my first question is, do they listen? Yes, they do. To be to be to be fair, um, there's a lot of nodding uh, and and and. and there's a lot of uh, uh, revelations that they when they when they consult when they go out to consultation. It's very 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 interesting that they come and you kind of think well, well government's coming or we you know got we better impress them and you know we better have, you know uh, listen to what they have to say but no no they they genuinely come and 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 want to find out what's going on in the market yes. and, and sometimes you tell them things and they said oh we didn't really realize that yes and and you know they're sitting there they're, they're putting together the, the laws and the compliance and the regulation uh, what they don't have the the uh, the experience or knowledge is of looking at you know at the un un unseen consequences. They don't see necessarily how it's going to be uh, uh, applied in the real world, yes. and and that so that consultation period and that consultation process is very very important. Mm -hmm. So have they listened? Yes, I, I you know there are literally things that I I, I can see in the that were in the renters reform bill, for example, that were clear indications that they had listened to things that we'd said, and and also that. You know, I, I knew that other people had put in and, yes. uh, and, and made the difference. So we're in a situation now that we, we don't have a renters reform bill, but we will have. The core of that is going to be the end of section 21. Uh, uh, and, and this government's pledged to, to implement it quicker than the, uh, the, the previous governments. Yes. Uh, but there is still a process that they will have to do where they will make their tweaks and changes, and then they need to come back and, and test them against the market. Some of those changes that they'll make, uh, you know, that, that, that they're politically committed to. Others, that, that, you know, there is still a, a, an opportunity to influence and change it. If you can, by evidence, show them that there's going to be an unforeseen consequence that's going to occur from it. And I probably can, you know, can just see people screaming out the television, you know, uh, uh, or, or or when they're listening to this and saying, "Yes, yes, we told them, you know, the section twenty one is going to cause all this, uh, this, this problems." The reality is going to go. What we need to do is make sure it works in the most effective way of doing that. Yes, there needs to be a good alternative. Yeah, to 100%. make the process work for everybody. Because really, the reality is the process is broken right now. Yeah. Um, so before we talk about what this new government may or may not do going forward. What do you think the last one did well and maybe not so well for, for landlords? Uh, it talked a good talk for a little while, didn't it? Because we, you know, it did, it did, it did put together the uh, the, the white paper and and the renters reform bill, and it was going through. Uh, they did talk about leasehold reform, and uh, something has gone through. Uh, <laughs> Yes, they had challenges and distractions, and they ran out of time uh, in uh, in the last in the last uh, parliament uh, to get these things over the line. Um, but I still think that all governments now have to have a wake up call. Uh, 
yes. and realize that something as important as housing that has, let's be frank about it, not really been prioritized for several generations. Mm. This situation has been allowed to get out to, to where we are now without government really appearing to care about it. Yes. And it is one of those things that gets talked about a lot, mm. the uh, the lack of accommodation, the lack of homes available in the country. You know, the, we, we need to build 300-odd thousand new uh, dwellings each year. We've, we've target we've never met. Um, but then at the same time, not being supportive of landlords and encouraging landlords to create quality homes that, that work for everybody. Um, it almost feels like they're slowly squeezing landlords to a point where many of them will be thinking, well, actually, this is just not viable anymore. I, I need to get out of this business. But what, what do you, first of all, do you agree with that? And do you think what would then replace, who, who is going to create these homes? That's the point. And, and I think that one of the things that, 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 that changed fairly rapidly uh, in terms of a direction was I think actually before, uh, it, you know, before COVID and, and, and uh, um, that period, I think there was a realisation that um, the way to get properties built in this country was that government wasn't going to pay for it mm. uh, because it, there, was, there isn't the, the personal, uh, the, 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 there isn't the money there yes. for the government to do the investment that happened in, you know, post-war in, in this country where we desperately needed houses. The government dipped into its pocket and it built tens of thousands, millions of homes. That, that, uh, that environment isn't there. So they were very much relying on what they hoped was going to be institutional investment. Mm -hmm. And they and and this was the you know the built to rent sector and other stuff which is growing yes. and it continued to grow and will 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 prosper. But this was their kind of like oh we, we, you know we're going to get legal and generals and the Marks and Spencers all to build these properties. And then of course we had uh, interest rate and an ec economic uh, uh, situation. Uh, 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 lack of, of of skills in terms of builders and 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 other stuff. They're part of that to do with Brexit. We won't go down the debate, but a lot of uh, Euro European builders went back to their country after yes. after Brexit. Uh, so suddenly the the environment changed and the investment prospects for the build to rent sector and the and the institutional investor was not as conducive. So they slowed down on it. So again. Just like, uh, you know, we relied on the little boats to rescue us at Dunkirk. It went back to the private, uh, the private landlord to pick up the slack again. Yes. So they're very happy to, for the landlord to pick up the slack when they need, need it. But when it becomes a bit of a, a nuisance in terms of, uh, uh, their, uh, uh, their, their, their bigger picture. And of course, all, all the, uh, the big political parties want to see home ownership as as the aspirational uh, end game yes. uh, as part of their political philosophies because aspiration is what drives people uh, you know uh, forward and and and, and 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 if you are a party of aspiration then you're more likely to vote for it so both Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak were bleep 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 about yes. uh, home ownership but we know that the affordability means that long term renting is here to stay it's now about the quality of the product, which you say, and I, I you know, I'm shocked at in any any market. I'm not shocked because I've been in it long enough. You would be shocked in any market to to realise how little the product is valued mm. by the customer in this market. Even though there's a lot of very good, high quality product, but but there's still the perception that you're yes. buying an inferior. Uh, um, a product of an, and you're, you're committed to an inferior lifestyle, which is got to change. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, there are some really high profile people that have no intention of ever, uh, renting proper, uh, uh buying property yes. themselves. Don't want to be encumbered by it. Adele apparently is one. She, she, right. she rents. She, she said, okay. why would I want a property? I'm not in any place long enough to actually yeah. own a property. Yeah. And the mindset is also different as well compared to, uh, you know, a couple of generations ago where it was a case of you've got a job for life and you'll build a home around that environment. And people these days are quite happy to work for somebody the other side of the world and just pick up uh, roots yeah. and just move uh, as well. So maybe we become a little bit more transient as well. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, and, 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 you know there, are, there is a stage in life where, where property ownership makes absolute sense. Uh, we also know that uh, the property market, every 
rightly or wrongly, every every uh, uh, economic recovery that we've had for the last uh, you know 70, 80 years has had property up front uh, uh, as, as, as a driver. So if you're going to look for quick wins for this, this Labour government they're going to, uh, in terms of growth, they can't stifle the property market. I mean, it kind of... Because it's a big force uh, within the economy overall. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, look what it did, you know, during COVID. You know, yes. if it, if it, the economy would have tanked even further if, if, if the property market hadn't, uh, you know... Well, been... even during lockdown, letting agents were operating, uh, yeah. there was ma property maintenance still. All those functions within our business were still carrying on, even though many people were sitting around not, not working further and stuff. There were certain aspects, and particularly in the property sector, that continued, construction continued. 100%. And we still, you know, we, we need to go down the route now of looking at sustainability within uh, within the, the market and now, when i mean sustainability i mean literally sustainable economically and socially because we need to get the homes we're not building properties we're building homes for people let's let's not beat around the bush yes. um uh, you know it, it, people want a home somewhere where, where you can feel that you can put your head down and rest and also in terms of the you know environmentally sustainable as well we have big challenges you know the, the carbon emissions from from property is very very high so we need to to, to invest in, in the stock there cost of living crisis is, is, is partly to do with uh, the rents but of course if you if you if you've got a cheap if, even if you've got cheap rents and you know, you're paying high electricity and gas costs. People are suffering that way as well. So at the moment, we have a booming market. I suspect everybody out listening there knows this. This is either a bubble waiting to burst or it's, it cannot it cannot last. And if we want to actually have a sustainable market, we've got to adjust it and we've got to deal with it now. Yes. What changes do you think this new government might bring in for housing that could have quite a positive impact? Okay, so so uh, so there's been a bit of a, a, a lot of talk at the moment. The, uh, the Labour Party manifesto was a good read, I have to say, uh, but it was a story. It wasn't uh, a, a list of priorities. It it, it was a, a, an overarching narrative of what they want to do, improve sustainability and, uh, and growth and everything else. Now they have to deliver. Yeah. So they've started. Uh, uh, they've started with some some small cosmetic things there. So breaking break news today: the word levelling up has gone. It is dead. Yes, I wasn't aware of that until you mentioned it earlier. Yeah, no problem. It literally went today. So it's, uh, so the, the levelling up project has disappeared. Uh, so we're back to communities and government, uh, uh, which are, are, are very important areas there. Uh, so they've now got to start delivering on what they, they say. So they've done, they've talked a lot about planning. They brought in the, 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 the regional mayors. So the, the, the mayor of the West Midlands would have been down in the number 10 today. Uh, and, and, and Andy Burnham and, and, and North East and all the other mayors. Uh, and they are going to be seen as power drivers for their regions to, 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 to build. And also, but they've, they, they've also want to have, uh, an, an overarching look at the planning process and see if some of the, um, more, antiquated or out of date concepts can be changed mm. and one of them uh, and you know and literally because i live about uh, half a mile away from this it's an important thing to me the green belt will need to be looked at mm. and is there so, uh, such such a, a thing as gray belt i.e yes. underutilized green belt that could be released for development and still have a, a sustainable utility to the community uh the reality is we have to have a sane housing policy that balances the needs of communities with the needs for more houses yes so that has to be community led in my personal view and uh and and, and it has to be connected with the, the communities in which they they uh they 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 deliver it it can't be all developer led it can't be all one you know uh, uh you know one size fits all it has to be a, a a concerted effort to do this but we've got to pull our finger out because we can't not build the houses that are doing that Yes. One of the things I like about this industry is the number of smaller developers that are looking at under 50 units mm. that are, uh, you know, are thriving 
where they are allowed to thrive. Yeah. So we need an environment where they are allowed to thrive. So you were talking to me earlier about, you know, the, the constraints you have in your, when you are do, with the planning systems yes. and all the different uh, regulations, if that you were allowed a bit more uh, flexibility and freedom, you would be able to deliver the sustainable houses yeah, that, that are needed. Sometimes the the governments are thinking about the bigger developers, 10,000 units from this yeah. one, 10,000 from that one. But there are lots and lots of small developers and those developers collectively could put a huge volume of uh, property into the um, uh, into the economy if, if, as you said, some of the things were relaxed and made a little bit easier for them. And, you know, and one of the things is quite obvious, uh, when you start to talk about the smaller developer, uh, they tend to be local. They tend to live in the communities that they're building the properties in. So they're not kind of like miles and miles away build and disappear yeah. off they they they're actually they want to see the, the sort of pro properties that they're building to, to be part of the communities in which they're uh, in which they're um, uh, you know they're building them yeah. and that means you know getting the infrastructure in the schools the clinics and, and the, the public transport whatever is needed to make the system more sustainable so you know it it, it makes 100% uh, you know sense so that that's very positive um of course, then there's, you know, uh, the regulations coming in on the renters reform. So I would see the renters reform bill going forward. It will contain most of the key elements it did before. So, of course, section 21 and uh, the change to the tenancies, I think, are, you know, 100% are going to be in. Notice periods is probably the area where they're going to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to differ. Uh, so you might see longer, um, uh, uh, notice periods, maybe a four months notice period if you want to sell the property, maybe a year, I don't know. So those are the sort of things they're going to have a debate over. And then the grounds, they are quibbling a little bit on the ground. It can't be too easy to find a, a ground to, 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 to effectively have a no-fault uh, eviction in there. It's got to be a genuine reason. How do you police that? Uh, in terms of the, the other stuff there, um, well, I was told by the government that they'd done quite a lot of research and 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 uh, preliminary work on the on on what's now going to be called the register. They called it the portal under the uh, the, the 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 last government because I think the word register, uh, you know, tended to kind of be associated with licensing and registering. But I think Labour are not scared of that. They'll call it a register. Mm -hmm. The property will be registered. The land will be registered. The letting agent will be registered. Um, and then what do you put on there in the database? Can you have property standards included on that? Is there ways of it integrating with the current uh, 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 regimes that you have? We know we have to have gas safety certificates. We know we have to have uh, EICs. We have to have uh, 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 EPCs, all of these things. In this day and age, can they not be integrated? I yeah. don't know. You know uh, it's government the advanced. The technology there for it to be done. It's, it's not difficult. No. To, if somebody wants to drive that, to bring all that yeah. data together quite easy. In fact, there's lots of tools that we use when we're looking for property searching and doing analysis and research that pulls a lot of this data together for us. It's just gone from the different place and collated it for us. So it's easy enough to, to do. So talking about registers, one group of people we didn't mention within registers was the tenants. Mm. Do you think there's a, a need or a, um, uh, a demand even that there should be tenants should also be registered? I think... There are too many barriers legally and politically to have a register of tenants per se. But saying that, there is a, 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 a winner takes all solution that a tenant would be happy to appear on some form of register. And that would be if you made it, uh, you know, commonplace, mandatory, whatever you want, mm -hmm. that your rent payments could be taken into consideration as, as part of your credit history. Mm -hmm. There are credit ladders and other companies yeah. like that that already do that, but it's not mainstream. Yes. There's also no mainstream uh, kind of requirement to even to have them referenced. Yes. And even yes. in this day and age, there are landlords there that are meeting people in the pub or, yes. the, or the mosque or the church, and they're saying, oh, you seem like a good chap yeah. or a good uh, lady. Uh, I'll rent you the property. Yes. And then when it goes wrong, they wonder what's happened yes. on that. So referencing, I think, for both parties, I think the tenants should have the right to have a referencing because it's their their passport to the next property yes. and maybe to maybe to a mortgage or to maybe something yes. like that. Uh, 
and it's also a security for the landlord. So I would definitely say to the government, consider making referencing uh, the rights, uh, you know, uh, a right on landlord. The majority of tenants are, uh, are never cause any issues, never have any issues with. It's a very small number yeah, yeah. that you have a problem with, and often they'll just have a history of problems, or if you move them on, that problem will just move Absolutely. to another landlord. Yeah. So again, so there must be some way of kind of, you know, highlighting those yes. without breaking their, you know, uh, their, their, their rights mm. of privacy or whatever, because, you know, it's, it's got to be a fact, not an opinion. Yes. Um, you know, and one person's view of very mild antisocial behavior is another person's health. Yeah. So we have to have some clearer guidance on, on, on yeah, how so we would do like that. like rent payments on time and stuff like that. But rent payments are a no brainer. You yes. Know. Yeah. And, that makes um, sense. you know, so therefore, you know, tenant can earn, you know, earn credit. Uh, and, and in terms of credit score by, by keeping up their payments, by yeah. being a good tenant. Yeah, and it makes sense then because yeah. they are people that want to then move on to home ownership. Yeah, yeah. That's a route for them to be able to, to do that. If, they, if they've been able to pay their rent over the last year on time without any issue, they should be able to service a mortgage of a similar yeah. amount. And, so it's yeah. a no-brainer for me that that, that that could be somewhere, an easy an easy way of, of, of building that trust in the relationship up. You know, it's giving it's giving a, a landlord and a tenant informed information about each yes. of the parties yes. to make that relationship work. Yeah. What's your views on uh, rent control with regards to this government? Do you think that's something they've got uh, an appetite for? Well, what they've done is, is, is they've been quite clever. Uh, so uh, they've grabbed, they've said, look, we're looking to increase the powers. Uh, de devolution, empower, uh, increase the powers uh, uh, of the nations and the regions. So we know in Scotland they've had some form of uh, rent caps and rent controls. Um, uh, first as an emergency measure uh, for COVID and then they've extended it to uh, uh, standard of living, but um, a cost of living, sorry. And they're now looking at maybe introducing it permanently. Wales have opted out at the moment, but they are consulting. Uh, if you Government's been quite clever because if you devolve it out there, you can say, "Well, we didn't impose it. It's it's a it's a local decision. Yes. You you know they're accountable to the local voters. If the vo local voters like it or it works for them, then then get on with it." Yeah. No, but what was quite interesting is that Romans leaders just did a survey and they put to, uh, quite a clever survey to landlords uh, about rent uh, rent um, um, caps. Well, well, rent controls. Yeah, and. Over fifty percent of them said they were not adverse to all forms of rent restrictions, and one of the ones that was very popular was having mandatory clauses in tenancy agreements that you can have a, a, a rent increase clause, which said that the, 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 the rent would be able to be annually raised annually, yes. and uh, there was a cap based on some form of inflation index, and that actually was quite popular in i think personally from looking at the stats it because a lot of landlords don't feel comfortable with going to their tenants and asking for an annual yes. increase yes you know they feel awkward you know they've maybe built up a bit of a personal relationship with these guys you know they deal with them on on, on a regular basis and 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 going asking them for more money is a painful thing there but if you've got it in your clause to say well look there's a clause that you sign there we're going to put it up it's only going to be put up by this year four five yes. six percent uh you know uh and 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 we won't put it up anymore and that's yes. reasonable it builds in a kind of a, 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 a an automatic system and you will see a, a situation where if you had that as a, a, a as some form of uh, um, rent review clause that helped keep rents at a reasonable level but you would still get your rises, which would help you protect you from uh, from inflationary yes. costs. Yes, that also could probably have an impact in house price growth as well, because that will then, if the rents are not spiking in terms of how they're increasing, they'll probably limit any major increase in price as well, which just creates more stability Absolutely. Uh, in the market. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And again, arbitration is always the way forward on, on these things there. So there is the scope for mediation and, and, and alternative uh, dispute uh, settlement for rents. I think is uh, there's a no-brainer there that that could be utilised. 
that if you if you you're disputing a rent uh, a rent uh, increase, you don't necessarily have to go all the way to the tribunal, yes. but maybe strengthening the tribunal as well as the ultimate one yeah. and make it easier to access. Uh, you know, and 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 transparency in how you measure the rents as well. I think that's the other thing. There, if you're going to have some form of measure that you can have a a measure a, a market measure, yes. the, the people have got to trust that market, and uh, you know it, it's reliable. And 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 those those are those are uh, are reliable figures that you can do. So it's a little bit of self-regulation, a little bit of uh, you know carrot and stick in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, strengthening the tribunals and uh, strengthening uh, 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 you know the right to, to mediation, and you know and maybe getting these rent clauses in there that kind of like people know from day one what 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 it's going to do. There's not going to be any surprises. Yes. The, the ridiculous thing was that you know after the interest rates shot up through the roof, landlords were physically having to. Go and ask for twenty yes. percent increases in their rent just to pay their mortgages off. How did it get to that? Yes. They were probably under by about eight, eight or ten percent in the first place because they hadn't had the discipline of making sure that they had those conversations every year. That yes. conversation could be we we'll keep the rent the same. Yes, yeah, and and historically we'd not increase rents when a tenant was in a uh, in a tenancy. We'd just wait until that tenant moves on. Yeah, and then and in some cases that would have been a few years that they're there, and we just. It was just practice within us not to increase yeah. those rents. And it was only kind of around COVID time when uh, utility price started to increase. Um, a lot of our portfolio is, is HMOs. Uh, we're paying the bills. We were then forced to increase the uh, increase the rents. Um, and so that was the only time that we did that. And now we've made that decision. We just need to review this regularly. Yeah, not, 100%. Not, you know, ad yeah. hoc. Yeah. Because it becomes a, it comes a shock, and when we did increase the rents, uh, we we within the business we felt that actually we'll have quite a few tenants that will probably leave because they're just not going to want to pay the increased rents. Uh, but what we actually found was a very small number left because when they started looking around in the market, all the rents started to increase at that point at the same time. I think that that's the issue, and I think yes. that if you're so out of kilter, you trap that person in your property. Yeah. Uh, you know that uh, they can't then move on. Yeah. I mean, but equally, we have to, we, we have to, you know, we have to, 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 you know, to look and say, well, actually, you know, what is worse, you, you know, uh, um, um, what is worse, having a tenant that uh, uh, you know has regular small increases in their in, in their in their rent, or having a tenant that you know the market rent. Is going to put them into penury. Yes, it, it, you know. I, I think it's. I think it's. It's shocking that you know local authorities look at the private, uh, the private rented sector and say, "Oh yeah, you know, you are exploiting tenants by charging these rents." N no, if it's some proper market rent, and they can't afford it, no landlord wants to put that that tenant into yes. debt. It's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt the tenants, and 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 that's. You know, it's because we don't have the social housing. And I think, you know, the elephant in the room is that we need to build adequate, dedicated social housing. Do you think that's likely to happen or? Uh, I, I think the will is there. Mm -hmm. I think it's now how you're going to deliver that and and, 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 and the mechanisms that you're going to deliver that because it's going to need a lot of concerted effort by a government to, to make sure that we hit those those targets and we enable that 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 that, that money to be uh, to be invested and how we, we we structure the capital investment to do that because yes. we know the country can't take any more of the structural debt we need to actually have capital investment and how do we get that capital investment in to the market that makes it sustainable to build this amount of property yes. To take the uh, to take the slack of the, uh, the the desperate need that we've got in you know, for, for that. You've mentioned earlier some of the uh, the big blue chips that uh, had intention of coming into the private renting sector and making quite a bit of noise in that space and uh, desire to become very large landlords. That seems to have got very quiet uh, recently. It, it did. I mean, the the uh, the the uh, you know the collapse, let's call it, or whatever it's going to be called historically. Uh, the uh, uh, the 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 trust uh, collapse uh, scared a lot of them off. Mm. Uh, we've also had the the instability now of an election. There's stability now. Uh, 
you watch to see how many uh, you know of these big institution guys will have personal invitations to number yeah. 10 now and yes. on number 11 and uh, you know a few canapes and a, maybe a maybe yes. a glass of prosecco and and i think there is indication that they are coming back there the, the confidence is coming back into that yes, market they'll be courting those uh, yeah. people back into the market yeah. mm. so but 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 they're still we're still facing uh, highly uh, you know material costs high labor costs uh, and uh, you know that's not countered by the, the by the land value increases yes. so it's got to actually make sense to spend especially in the in the bit uh, the the the, the long term build to rent is that you know they're going to have to have a sustainable market model that's mm -hmm. going to be, be predicated on 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 near near 100 percent occupancy uh, and 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 sustainably long-term rents yes. so that's their model and 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 you know uh, and where it works it works really well mm -hmm. uh, it's not for everywhere and that's why the small landlord still has a very very important part in the market but the institutional ones i think they will start to shift now and they start to move back in because you know this market has always been a good property market for investors to come into so it makes absolute sense for pension funds and, and everybody else to say it's safe money to 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 to, to go into the into the property market mm -hmm. as long as it's on a sustainable level and yes. uh, and the investment is there to uh, uh to, you know to, to back up the words to be honest yeah. Do you think they they're likely to create grants and subsidies to support and encourage some of this development? Do you think that could happen, or it's uh, it would not probably it, look politically? Um... I think at the moment, uh, 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 yeah, where are you going to get those pots of money? Mm. Um, that would be uh, an interesting uh, uh, area. So um, there's still scope, in my view, for uh, 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 for taxing say taxing the energy companies and, mm -hmm. and, and, and and putting that pot of money into helping getting properties up to sustainability yes. you know insulation simple one but other kind of measures to help and I'm you know uh, it, it the, it's got to be sustained sustained and established technology to do it you know I, I, I'm I, we listen to the heat pump thing there. I, maybe some of you, you know, the, the listeners and watchers have, have, have took advantage of the grants, but I don't think that that was something that, uh, that, 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 that took off like a, a rocket. I think we need, but the insulation could, but not vouchers. And it's got to be, it's got to be a, a sustainable kind of, uh, yeah, well thought out because it's very easy for some yeah. of these things to get abused. No, 100%. Not really deliver what or too complicated to. or yeah. uh you know maybe not deliver the results that you actually want you know not not yeah. not good value for money so uh, I'd, I'd like to see there was some kind of investment in that way but a we haven't got the money and b i think it needs a lot of thinking to actually implement this correctly yeah. you know so just as we start wrapping up are yeah. there any alarm bells that you see from the current uh, new government uh, around um, housing any major concerns I think I think um, there will be some fear uh, about capital gains. Now, I don't think it's a big threat to the small landlord at the moment. Now, some of you guys, the guys out there with big portfolios, that might be start to have turnovers that might might attract uh, attention, and there may be. Uh, um, uh, seats, uh, you know, uh, capital gains may be lo looked at as a mechanism for larger companies. But um, remember, a lot of people, because of the Section 24 changes, incorporated because they thought that it was going to be more tax advantageous. They now probably thinking, oh my God, if they were putting up CGT, what are we going to do? I see no indication yeah. of that. But they've got to get the money from somewhere. Yes. So um, I don't see that there's going to be punitive taxation on landlords. I think they they've gone as far as they can at the moment without busting the market. Mm. But I don't see there will be a huge r draw uh, uh, pullback on it. Yes. So, so it's not going to go backwards. Yeah. You know, not going to abolish Section Twenty Four. It will continue, but 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 as time goes on, that you know that will kind yes. of diminish. At the moment, it's at its peak. Yes. And and it's hurting people, 
as it goes further down the line, it gets less and less and, you know, tapers right off. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I, yes, that would might have been a, a good way of stimulating the market by changing that. I don't see that on the cars at the moment, mm -hmm. but I don't see otherwise that they're going to to to, uh, to to kill the golden goose when they know that property can drive the economy yes. and give and give the the the, the, medi the short and medium term growth that they're looking to actually raise the money to help them do some of the other things Good they're things. doing. Yeah, I definitely think we're in for some interesting times. I think the next few months will start giving us clarity where the market's probably going to go, depending on what they yeah. announce or what decisions they make. So I think we're in for interesting times. Well, absolutely. Mm. I mean, as I say, I think the, uh, the the election result proved that people were no longer scared yes. of of, of Labour. Yes. There's nothing to be scared of. Whether there's anything to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, overly enthusiastic about, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're literally uh, the f first weekend of the government yes. finished, isn't it? So I'm more happy to come back and analyse and you can play this back to me and uh, show me where I was right and where, where we, should, we should definitely do that. Sean, I really appreciate you taking your time out to, to do this. What's the best way for people to reach out and connect to you if they're looking to connect with you? Uh, well, look, I use LinkedIn a lot, and and uh, so, so to, to link into me on LinkedIn, I share a lot of content uh, and 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 comment on it. So, you know, we've got a very education is is so key in this yes. market. You know, uh, you know, it's 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 gold. Yeah. So the more information and reliable information you get, the better. So I try and always share content that is uh, that is that is uh, you know informed and 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 it's the right information. Um, and it, it's just you know we're lucky you know in this day and age to have uh, the, you know social media it's so accessible. Yes. Uh, and, and so many people like you who are doing these education uh, stuff. So it's easy for you to spend five, ten minutes kind of catching up. Yeah, and getting uh, on up that. speed with stuff. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Sean, thank you thank so you much. much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.